St. John's Red Storm Men's Basketball, Madison Square Garden and Carnesaca Arena. A good team looking to be great. A team with an illustrious past. College teams measure themselves by those teams who have come before them. Each team takes tradition and adds it to their own identity. Today, St. John's players come from all over the world. The idea is still the same, working together as a team to win games. In order to play basketball in New York, a player has to have discipline, faith, and perseverance. Two players stand out in representing the type of well-rounded individuals attracted to St. John's. These players are God's Gift Achua and Jamal Branch. Life is about the choices you make. For Jamal Branch, those choices sometimes meant the difference between living and dying. Growing up in the middle of Kansas City, he watched as friends became involved in gangs. Drugs and crime took over their lives. People he knew and loved were shot and killed on the streets. Jamal turned to basketball to help him keep away from all the bad influences. His family moved to the outskirts of Houston and life became a little better a little safer. Still, Houston, as one of the largest cities in the United States, provided many distractions. With help, he maintained his interest in basketball and his talent grew. Jamal relies on his faith to guide him to make the right decisions. He cites certain individuals who came into his life at the right time, who guided him to where he is now, playing basketball in the Big East at St. John's University. I grew up in Kansas City, Missouri, and I uh, moved to Texas my eighth grade year, to Houston, Texas, that is. And then I was in Houston, Texas since sophomore year, and then after that I transferred and went to a prep school in Arlington, actually. How was that growing up in Houston? It was great. I loved it. Great school system there. In Kansas City, it wasn't a great school system out there. I was doing really well in basketball. I didn't take school seriously, but my parents made one of the best decisions of my life to move to Texas. And, um, got great at academics and um, I'm here now in St. John's. I grew up close to Houston as well and I, it's a real diverse area and it offers a lot. Um, there's also some dangerous elements. Growing up, uh, how did you manage to stay away from that? Actually, it was more dangerous in Kansas City. My parents wanted me to get out of that. It was hard because it was where my parents and family and friends that I grew up with uh, lived and it was kind of hard leaving them. In Houston, I was in a great area. I was in Atascacita. And it was just uh, great people there. They took me in and um, had a great uh, career in basketball there and school academically. And um, I actually committed to Texas A&M. And in that area, it was a lot of kids that were going to Texas A&M. I built a great relationship with them. And it was just a great all-around experience. So where does the faith come in? Come into play. I was raised in a Christian background. My uh, uncle was a preacher. I was kind of there just because I was young. I really didn't know anything, and I was just um, there just because my family was there. I didn't really take it seriously until I moved to Arlington, Texas, and I met a guy, my pastor, who was my mentor, Mylon Sanders. I met him in Arlington at a um, rec center. We were just playing basketball one time, and oh, wow. I was going against this guy who I just thought was old. This old guy just playing basketball. He asked me a question, and he was just like, how's your faith? I didn't really have an answer for it, and I was always around people who was Christians and believed in um, God and the Bible. I just really didn't take it seriously until then. I met him, and he was the pastor over at Chosen Life in Arlington. From there, it's just been great turn my life around. And since I moved out here, I meet with him every Mondays, and we kind of have Bible studies over FaceTime. I call him before games, and we have a prayer and just discuss some stuff 
every Monday, so about he'll give me passages and verses to read in. What are some of the verses or passages that you... Uh, right now I'm in the book of John. It's just basically the, the basics of how everything works and your belief and the faith in God. So you're reading John and you reflect on your life. How do you see things? It puts everything in perspective. For me, it was um, all these things. I was just kind of going through the motions with everything. I didn't really know who to lean on to until I leaned on to God and asking him for help for guidance. Reading that passage and seeing how he worked with others as he healed people that were sick. They believed him from that, that point forward. And I was in a dark place at one time and I didn't have anyone to kind of lean on. I mean, I had my parents and they just told me to just keep my head in the Bible and ask God questions. And that's what I did and he's helped me and I'm here today and I'm blessed and I'm very thankful. It was just, uh, I injured myself. I mean, I was a good football player at the time, and I took football seriously over basketball, and I injured myself, injured my ankle. Couldn't play for a while, and I was just miserable, and just bad grades, and following the wrong crowds, and I was just like, man, this isn't me. I actually got into one point where one of my friends got killed. That there just really, hit me hard. That's when I was just like, okay, I really need to get in the Bible. And I was I was kind of in it, but I wasn't in it as I was when I got to Houston. And I had my uh, my cousin get shot. I got close with him, and then that's when we started hitting it really hard and um, started changing my life. You also mentioned an yeah. uncle that was a preacher. My uncle was a preacher. He ended up um, going to jail. That kind of played a part in me not taking it as seriously. So you felt like, I have an uncle, he's a preacher, but now he's in jail, so I'm sort of conflicted. Right, exactly, and uh, that, that happened when I was in Kansas City. And, okay. Um, so that's why I was just like, kind of hesitant about everything, but um, that's when I met Mylon when I moved to Arlington, Texas. And I met Mylon, he just put everything in perspective and broke it down to me in terms, because he was a basketball player at the time, and he yeah. was just breaking everything down like to where I can get it. It was just like, I didn't understand everything. What was he trying to tell you? About his background and him being a basketball player and him taking basketball serious and not really focusing to the spiritual life of things. Him being the star, getting the girls. When he was in college and high school and how he grew up in a home where his dad was doing drugs. His uncles were doing drugs. He was just around all of that and how he was intentional about changing. And so, uh, yeah, he went from there. And, Help me with everything. Did you feel like you were seeking it in some way? I definitely, because um, everything he said, I kind of related to it. Where he's at now, he's at a great place, and he has a beautiful wife and kids and a happy family. He started off at his house and um, at a church, and it's it's just so it's just a blessing to see where he's at now. He's in a studio, and a lot of people is going to him, and he's got um, a lot of athletes and. The, high school, college level, going to and everything. It was just a blessing and great to see you. Jamal, thank you so much for thank meeting you. with us today. No problem, thank Good you. Good luck with everything in the thank future. You so much. In Nigeria, soccer is king, but the country has also produced a handful of very talented basketball players. From Michael Oluwakande, to the great Hakeem Olajuwon. As a kid growing up in Nigeria, God's Gifts Atua knew little or nothing about these players. The NBA meant nothing to him. Like most kids, God's Gifts Atua's first love was soccer. As an adolescent, he started to grow taller than most of his peers. He started to play basketball pickup games. As he grew, basketball began to grow on him. Then he was discovered by a coach at a basketball camp. From growing up in his hometown in Port Harcourt, Nigeria, to playing on the hard courts of basketball at St. John's University, God's Gift's journey has been one filled with fate and faith.
been like a long ride, you know, but um, it's been fun so far. Um, I come from like a big city, Polakwa is like the large, second largest city in Nigeria. So I'm kind of used to, you know, the New York City lifestyle and everything. So, you know, it wasn't that difficult to fit in, you know, when it comes to the environment. How was it growing up there? It was good, you know, it was good growing up there. Um, I wouldn't trade it for any other place. I actually liked the environment, you know, I liked everything, you know, about the city. So you grew up playing soccer? Yes. How did that come about? Every kid in Nigeria actually grew up playing soccer. It's like the traditional sport. I don't think there's any kid, that, especially a male, that ever grew up in Nigeria or in that part of the world, you know, without first playing soccer. You know, you're like actually born into it and, and all your age may play. So that's, I was just one of those kids. So you started getting taller. And yeah. at that point, did basketball enter your mind? No, actually, I didn't like basketball. Whenever I like, saw them playing on TV, I didn't actually like it because they scored so many points. And I felt like it was boring scoring so many points. You know, in soccer, you get to like, sometimes it, nobody scores. And sometimes they get to score one or two goals or five goals. It's like something really big. So I didn't like basketball because they scored up to 100 points. I started getting taller and taller, and all the guys that played soccer with, they started getting shorter, <laughs> and it felt weird and awkward. The coach saw me on the street, and I was like, hey, you're, getting, you're like really tall. Why don't you come to my academy? So I, that's how I decided to um, switch to basketball. I gave it a try, and I just liked it from the first day. You know, it was fun, and I never stopped playing since then. How long was that development? How, how long were you working with the coach? I worked with him for like, three, four years, and other kids too. I'm, I'm kind of a fast learner, so it didn't take me that much time to like catch up with other kids that were already in the program. So playing it, that's when you fell in love with it? Yes. I read that uh, there was a moment where the coach uh, saw something in you. You were going up for a layup, and you ended up doing a, a dunk. Was that something that you had planned, or did that just come about? For me, I'm more like more of a spontaneous kind of person especially when I'm on the basketball court. I like making decisions, you know, at that point. So it just happened. They came to Nigeria to recruit and we were, we were in the camp, to the basketball camp, and I had like a wide open fast break. And I just decided to do something, you know, and they were there and they saw it. So that's where, you know, uh, I caught their attention. And that's how everything started. You came to America after that. It takes a lot of faith to go to a place that you've never been to. How does faith play a part in the decision that you made to come um, here? I actually realized that basketball was my path, so I just followed basketball. That was, that was me. I just followed basketball, and I was like, you know, whatever it comes out of it, let me just go with it. Your father was a minister. How was that growing up with a, with a father as a minister? It went well. My parents gave me a little, like, you know, um, struggle, you know, when it comes to playing sports and all that, because my dad is not concerned uh, about education, and he really loved school. My parents really loved school, so they're like, you know, just leave sport and just focus on, on your books and all that stuff. They were kind of okay with soccer because it's yeah. more of a traditional sport. But and basketball wasn't that big, you know. So when I started playing basketball, they gave me like a hard time. They like told me never to go to the court to play anymore and all that stuff. But I kind of fought it, you know, like a kid. I had to like sneak out to go play and all that because I actually liked it. So that's how everything like turned out to me. So you, you were a rebel? It's, if you won't put it that way, but today, like I talk to them and they're like all happy. They're like, "Wow, I'm very really happy that you made that decision." There are some some Nigerian uh, basketball players in the NBA. Uh, Akeem Olajuwon might have been a little before your time, but did you use those as uh, as fuel for your for your dad when you're saying? When I was still playing basketball, I didn't know any of any Nigerian that was in the NBA because I didn't like basketball. I never watched it, so I liked it when I actually started playing. So I didn't have any like pre-idea of who was playing what and all that stuff. I didn't know. I just loved it when I started playing. Does the background of soccer play into your basketball, how you yeah, play? Yeah, it actually does. Um, uh, Footwork-wise, like, my legs are really good, and um, I'm quicker than most of the guys I play against. I think that's the result of, you know, playing soccer from when I was a child. Let's talk about your faith. How does that play a part in your life and in basketball? For me, it's the biggest thing in my life, you know. Um, it's the most important thing. I can't, I, I can't trade it for anything, you know. Um, God has been so good to me, you know, growing up and from the environment I came from and all that stuff and how, where I am right now and where I'm actually going, you know. God has been the biggest part of my life, so 
is the most significant thing in whatever I do. I put God first, then every other thing is second. At first, it was a shock to everyone that heard it. They're like, "Is that really your name?" You know. Sometimes I had to like show people my ID, you know, and all that stuff for them to believe that, you know, that's actually my name. But you know, people are kind of getting used to it because I guess they found out that that's actually my name. That people can enter names like that. But in Nigeria, it's, it's, it's common. So Nigeria was no no questions asked. No questions. Like it's yeah, very, maybe very few, mm -hmm. but rarely. But here is like. Every, almost every single time, yeah, you know, I have to like tell people, you know, this is actually my name. Actually, it happened yesterday, I met somebody and they were like, you know, what's your name? And I told them, they were like, oh, no, I mean your real name, you know that. Really? So, what did, and what did you say? That's, I said, that's my name. It's kind of funny because I have to like start laughing because I get it so <laughs> many times. And they think I'm trying to like, I'm playing around with them, but yeah. that's actually my name. What's the most positive thing you've heard when you when you've told someone your name? They just they said that's really cool. Yeah. They just said that's really cool. What's the most negative thing you've heard? People say everything, you know, <laughs> but I don't really pay attention to uh, what that's people good. say. So how do you balance your uh, your academics with sports? I like school. That's something that um, my parents they like, you know, programmed school into us. You know, growing up they like this is the most important thing in life. I actually grew up liking school. When I was playing basketball in. Because in Nigeria, you can't really do sports actively and also school actively. So when I came here, I realized that you can actually combine both of them. So it was easier for me. So it's easier for me to study on the plane. It's easier for me to study on the bus, in the hotel room and all that stuff. So I grew up like that. So I don't really struggle when it comes to you know, either school or basketball. It's easier for me to balance. What's special about St. John's? I like the fact that it's a Catholic school. They have more a higher standard when it comes to the things they do. So I like the environment, I like the history of their basketball program. They have like a great history. Do you have any players that you follow or, or, or think about from the past? Yeah, yeah Chris Mullin and um, Mac Jackson. You know, I see them play, I watch them all the time. What's uh, in your future? Right now, I haven't made a decision yet, but I think I'll make a decision come, you know, May. Are you leaning one way or the other on um, anything? Or? I, I'm trying to keep that to myself at this point. Nice. You know, yeah, okay. So, yeah. yeah. What about uh, following your dad's footsteps? And that's something that's big for me. Um, but it's going, it might be in a different direction. I know I'm, I'm, I know I'm actually called in that direction, but it's not really, I don't really know how to explain it, but it's not really um, like, how do I put it? It's not really like, I don't really have to do it the way he's doing it, but I can, there are, there are many other ways that I can talk to people about God and like minister to people apart from standing, you know, in the pulpit and in church. And there are so many other ways. I'm not like throwing that off, it might come, you know, but yeah. there are so many other ways I can do the same thing. You have a lot of people that look up to you being, uh, playing basketball for a respected school. What do you say to someone that's, uh, that's feeling a little down on their luck? When I talk to people, I tell them, I say, if you, come from, if you know where I come from and the things I've been through, I think you understand that you have way more opportunities because growing up playing basketball, it was like a black cloud. Like, you know, I couldn't see ahead of me, but I just kept playing. You know, I woke up in the morning, went to school, came back, went to work out, and it looked like nothing was ever going to happen. But I just stayed on the grind and one people are gonna find you, you know, just keep doing whatever you're doing and do it well. I think that's why I tell people I say, hey, people are going to notice you and you know and so many things will happen from there. I think this is actually the direction that God wants me to go to. That's why I'm at this point, you know, in time. I'm at this point, you know, in this time of my life. Do you have any uh, any phrases or anything uh, maybe from the Bible that sort of carries you on through the day? Every day I, I think about how God actually loves me and the things that he has, you know, done for me and all that stuff. So, like on my basketball shoes that I'm wearing right now, it says, um, I have um, Romans chapter 5 verse 8 on it. It just tells people how much God loves people and how God sent Christ to die for us. It's a way of telling people that God actually loves them because most time people feel like 
God is like a dictator and someone that just has a hammer you know, by his head to like hit anybody that does something bad. But no, really, God actually loves people. So it's, it's a message of love too that, that I have for everyone that I come across. Thank <laughs> you.